And speaker, I want to look into your eye because I'm addressing you. He was distributing sanitizers in Western province. Yesterday, in Mumias in particular, yesterday, Senator Kasanga was in the, in the press. Our own senator talking about COVID millionaires, people who have stolen masks, sanitizers to go and sell. Senator Malala was distributing sanitizers to widows. They misled us, Mr. Speaker, and this, this is very challenging because as lawyers, myself, including uh, uh, Senator Omogeni, should not have let Senator Malala off. But we were told there's mischief in, in this chamber. So against our oath as lawyers, Mr. Speaker, we have come to address you. Against our oath, we have, left, we have let Senator Malala, who was supposed to go to Nairobi, uh, province, Nairobi area, is now on his way to Mumias. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is you, and I'm looking at you. It is you, Mr. Speaker, who has been defied. And Mr. Speaker, if you cannot sit on that seat, this will be a good time to resign. I can sit there. <laughs> because this is a chamber of parliament. It is to an extent, Mr. Speaker, you have such powers that if there was a vacancy in the executive, Mr. Speaker, you could, you could be a president. And for even a rumor, Mr. Speaker, that you're under pressure. I hear you're under pressure. Pressure from who? Did God call you? Did you speak to God this afternoon, Mr. Speaker? It's Who is good, pressurizing it, it, it's you? It's good you said it's a rumor. Yes. Because I'm, I'm not under any pressure. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, if you are not under any pressure and nobody has called you, Mr. Speaker, this session must end. Now, because if you gazetted a special sitting, Mr. Speaker, and somebody distributed sanitizers, and that is a misdemeanor. It's a misdemeanor to the extent, Mr. Speaker, we would have paid for a bond, would have finished this business, and Senator Malala would have been charged even if they wanted to take him to Somalia or Kakuma. Mr. Speaker, there has never been a day since your election that you are under trial. It's not us. We have done our bit. If you can issue a directive seated in your, cha in your chair, and Mr. Speaker, somebody says he's on leave. Imagine what would happen, Mr. Speaker, if the car that is driving Senator Malala at high speed rolls somewhere in Naivasha. God forbid, would, would the cabinet secretary be on leave also? The contempt that they are treating us, the contempt they treat people who are elected, Mr. Speaker, tells you, Mr. Speaker, that this country is on the brink. But let me just finish, because in my anger I might say something that might lead to things I don't want to say. This is what the 32nd president said, and I'm talking to the powers, because other than taking my life, you have nothing, no control over me. He said this in 1941, we too, born to freedom, and believing in freedom are willing to fight and maintain freedom. We and all others who believe deeply as we should would rather die on our feet than live on our knees. We will not live on our knees. If Mr. Speaker, you even direct we proceed, there will be so much chaos in this floor, Mr. Speaker. There will be no action. You will have to call police to arrest all of us. Because we cannot proceed, Mr. Speaker. It is chilling to think, Mr. Speaker, that we can proceed when our senators are being taken 